How's it going, YouTube? Today we're going to talk about some really cool things. Um, welcome back to this week's episode of Tech News. This is Tech News 04. Um, and we have a bunch of different things to talk about. We're going to be talking about Android uh, 5 Lollipop coming out. Have you guys been waiting for this? Is it on your Nexus devices? Which uh, device are you waiting to see? Are you too impatient? Are you going to go mod it with CyanogenMod and get something like that going? Uh, we're also going to take a look at, at the end, five interesting facts. Stay tuned till the end because we're going to actually give six on this episode of really cool uh, facts that I bet you actually didn't know. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Beats getting reinvented. Um, now that they're with Apple, um, that's going to be an interesting topic. Uh, also, going to talk about LED mood sweaters and shows how people really feel, or so it says. And the uh, thing I wanted to talk about was smartphone app uses selfies to check your cholesterol level. I don't know what that's about. We'll talk about that later. The Universal Translator is real. And its name is Sigmo. We're going to talk about basically a thing that you can bring around while you're traveling that will actually translate for you while you're talking to people. Very cool. Um, and we're going to talk about unofficial prescription eyeglasses for Google Glass debut. And uh, at the end, uh, even though we don't talk about politics much, we are going to talk about the uh, re recent horrible things that went down in Paris. And uh, we're going to touch on that a little bit. So this and more is coming up. Let's take a look. So YouTube, this is Tech News 04, and thank you for subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate that. Uh, those subscribers are, are really important to keep me going, and uh, I really do appreciate it. Um, also, um, if you do like this video, let me know um, at the end and uh, by liking it or, or by leaving a comment. I'd really love to hear from you guys. I want to create a really interactive channel with you guys. Um, and so, as I said, at the end, we're going to have uh, normally five interesting facts, but today we're actually going to tell six because there's one more I just really wanted to throw in there. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a, as you may or may not know, this is going to be a series of video that I'm going to do every Saturday or Sunday, and uh, we're going to talk about many different things, from tech to a little bit of politics to space and astronomy and that kind of stuff. Um, we're going to kind of go all over the place, but the main focus is going to be around tech. Um, so the first thing I want to talk to you guys about was uh, Beats reinventing its iconic studio headphones. So as you know, Beats by Dr. Dre originally was put out. And then um, it was later bought by Apple. And when Beats actually came out, I really didn't like the headphones. Um, I still don't, to be honest. And part of that has to do with the fact that they don't actually give you the real sound of the music. They give you a modified sound that the studio people think would sound better to the average person. But if you're actually wanting to edit audio and take out ugly sounds, you don't want headphones like that. Or if you're listening to like metal or any kind of music that has a lot of sounds that people might you know, might get filtered out that you don't want filtered out. That's why I don't like Beats. They're also really expensive for what they are. I mean, I'd much rather have a pair of nice Sennheiser headphones. I mean, you'd grab the two and you'd just know the difference right away. Um, but Beats was actually bought by Apple, which I thought was funny because I, let me just get this straight. I love Dr. Dre. Um, he's the beat master. I used to love hip hop. I'm not so much into that now, but I still really do love his beats and his, even his rhymes, um, which a lot of people said were done by Eminem, but anyway, off topic. So I do like Dre. But these headphones are just a gimmick, and I don't know what these new ones are going to look like. I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. But, you know, straight up, I mean, <laughs> I just think it's funny that Apple, the company that already produces overpriced crap, goes and buys something that I think is overpriced crap. It just kind of fitting, right? So what do you guys think that's going to be like? Um, because these are reinvented. It's iconic studio headphones, as they say. The other thing I want to talk to you about is, have you ever guys used a mood ring? I'm sure you guys have when you were a kid. You bought those little gimmicky mood rings. They didn't really work too well, in my experience. I mean, they'd change color, but that didn't actually display my mood. It displayed my temperature, right? Um, now, they're coming out with LED mood sweaters that shows people how you really feel. Now, I don't know if that's going to be a gimmick, kind of like the, the LED mood rings. Um, no, not the LED mood rings, the, the regular mood rings. But I don't know. What would that be like if it did work? Would people, you know, would people be a, a leave, leave you alone? You're upset, or would they, you know, would they try to make fun of you and you're in a good mood, or <laughs> you know, uh, or would these shirts, yeah, be cheap like the mood rings and just not work at all? I wonder what you guys think about that. Uh, there was a picture on the one article I was looking at that had a girl um, wearing one, and it looked really vibrant and bright, but uh, can be cool in a nightclub. Um, not that I go to nightclubs being married, but uh, unfortunately. <laughs> 
Um, the other thing I want to talk about was the smart smartphone app, and I'm going to put links in the description for all this kind of stuff. Uh, smartphone app that uses selfies to check your cholesterol level. Researchers from Cornell University have developed a smartphone at attachment and app that can measure your cholesterol. This can help patients better monitor their health and habits. What do you guys think of that? Um, can can an app actually take a picture of your cholesterol level? Um, I don't know how that works. Then again, it does have an attachment that kind of changes things. The other thing I want to talk about is the Universal Translator. Um, and the article I was looking at says, it's real and its name is Sigma. Have you ever found yourself in a foreign country with little grasp of the, of the local language? No longer will you have to make wild wild hand gestures and speak in uh, broken vocabulary. Sigma can translate 25 different languages just by hearing someone speak. Sorry, my ink's running out of my printer, so it's a little faint on here. It's hard to read. The other thing I wanted to, uh, well, I guess we'll talk about that a little bit. What would that be like? You know, if you'd go to another country and, you know, go there, and uh, normally, I I've never left and gone to another country, but I could see how tough that would be because I'm very vocal, and um, I'm normally very good at getting my point across or explaining things to people, doing IT and, you know, showing people how software works and stuff like that. It's kind of something I'm good at, but uh, I wouldn't know what it would be like if I couldn't, you know, couldn't speak the native language. Like, we have some guys who really kind of have a hard time at, at work or whatever, and, you know, like we have, there's one guy that I, you know, I know, and he, you know, he, he speaks a foreign language and he has to answer the phone all day. That must be so hard, you know, really, like, language is everything. You know, people don't, people, when they call you up for computer support, they're already, they already think <clears throat> they have to talk computer jargon, which means it's already a language that's Greek to them. Now they have to talk to somebody who doesn't even understand English. That's twice as hard. So that's really tough. Don't get me wrong now. Like, you know, my wife's half Japanese, and I think, you know, I have a lot of, Respect for people that can go into a foreign language, into a foreign country, and actually do that kind of job and succeed, or even like, that's tough. I, I don't know if I could do that because, you know, language. Yeah, to learn another language would be tough. But this one kind of bridged that because you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to worry about it. You wouldn't, you would just have this thing that would kind of translate. It probably wouldn't translate properly, but people would still get the idea, and it, it would be a thing that looks like you'd wear around your neck that would kind of just, just talk, but. The other thing I want to talk about is the um, the last thing actually um, from, from the tech news is unofficial prescription eyeglasses for Google Glass debut. No one for sure, uh, again this is really faint, I apologize for reading kind of off. No one is sure when Google will come out with prescription lenses, but a company in India already has. If you want to buy a pair, you'll have to talk directly to the company first, which is currently accepting inquiries. Link in the description again. And the last thing I wanted to... Um, talk about was the Paris thing. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know my opinion on that. I have lots of friends that are Muslim. And, you know, truth be told, they're some of the nicest people I know. But, you know, a lot of people say that this isn't the mainstream view of a lot of Muslims. But it is. It completely is. Like, if you actually ask them, they'll, like, the majority of them want Sharia law in every country. And Sharia law, you know, they don't allow people to be gay. You know, people in Saudi Arabia get their head chopped off for, for being gay. Um, and so, you know, that's that's one thing to point out. Another thing is apostasy. Um, in, you know, in the Muslim religion, if you do choose to leave the religion, um, if you're in a country that's fundamentally Muslim, they'll put you to death. And so you, you have to look at that kind of stuff and understand that Muslims do want the Sharia law in every country most Muslims, like like over 60% of them. Um, you know, there was, a, there was a study that showed, I think it was 78 or 79% of British Muslims thought the Danish cartoonists should be put in jail just for writing a cartoon. And I understand that this is a really, it's different in Muslim countries, but that's in Muslim countries. We don't need to practice Sharia law here. You don't need to come into a dem democratic country and pull out your gun, especially on a newspaper that makes fun of the Pope, makes fun of Jewish people, makes fun of you know, all sorts of religions, you know, and a lot of these Muslim countries too, like they go and they ban YouTube <laughs> because YouTube wouldn't take down these, these videos of the prophet and these cartoons of the prophet. But YouTube doesn't do that for religious, like Christian stuff either. They won't take it down if it's not inappropriate or, you know, and so I want to let you guys think about that too. I mean, that was, that was really horrible for them to do that. 
and I just want to point out, this isn't a, a, a clash on Muslims. I mean, the, well, the cop that got shot in uh, <laughs> in Paris was actually a Muslim, you know, and, and so this isn't a thing against all Muslims, but I do want to point out that there is definitely, in my opinion, a death cult forming in the Muslim religion, and, you know, they're, they're not really, you know, the last thing I want to say about this is, you know, the only difference between Christianity and Islam is actually one of the things that most Muslims um, brag about with their religion is that the Quran hasn't changed in thousands of years, and that's true. And the Bible has. The Bible used to have this kind of horrible stuff in it, and still does if you look at the, the Old Test. I mean, read Leviticus or read, you know. So, you know, it's not a, a bash on religion, but I just think this, this is kind of getting out of hand these days. But I want to know what you guys think about that. And the last thing I want to talk about is five interesting facts that I found that I thought were really interesting. Um, off of that negative stuff. <laughs> Rest in peace to the people who died. Um, anyway, um, number, uh, interesting fact number one. The 57 on Heinz ketchup bottles represents the number of variety of pickles that the company once had. Um, so that's interesting. I always thought that 57 maybe meant that the flavors that they had, and maybe that is what it means, but I thought that was interesting. Did you guys know that? Fact number two, the number of, the number 172 can be found on the back of the U.S. $5 bill in the bushes at the back of the Lincoln Memorial. I know most of my audience is American, I'm Canadian, so you guys will have to tell me if that's true. Number three, President Kennedy was the fastest random, uh, random speaker in the world, with upwards of 350 words per minute. I wonder if I could beat him. <laughs> Number four, in the average lifetime, a person will walk the equivalent of five times around the equator. So if you ever wanted to know if you could walk around the world in your lifetime, I'm going to say probably. Well, you'd have to probably swim part of that. Um, number five, orthodontia is the fear of teeth. Some people are actually fear of teeth, or fear, um, afraid of teeth. I don't know what that would be like. How, how are you afraid of something you have in your mouth? Do you go to the dentist when you have a fear of your teeth and ask him to rip out your teeth? Number six, according to suicide statistics, Monday is the favorite day for self-destruction. So, number six is the day that people decide to decide to kill themselves. That's pretty sad. But anyway, what do you guys think of my video? Um, let me know what you guys think. Uh, we're going to be doing another video after this. This is just our, our weekly tech news. Um, so, write and subscribe. Tell me what you guys think. And I'll see you guys later. Uh, next, oh, one other thing I wanted to talk about was next week we're going to be doing... Uh, Tech News 05, and that's going to have some really cool stuff, so make sure you guys stay tuned next week for that. I'm going to try to do these videos every Saturday and Sunday. Um, you know, and, and, and last episode, we, we, we talked about um, we talked about bad techs, and we talked about different things with that. So I want to know what you guys thought about that video. Um, and the other thing I wanted to... Um, one second here. So the other thing was that I'm going to be start doing server builds. Somebody asked me to actually show how to build a server up from the ground. So I'm going to show you guys how to build a Windows server. And maybe if I have time, I'll start doing Linux servers. I want to start doing Linux videos, but I just don't have time to really mess. Like, I like using solid states. And I don't want to, you know, I got a small solid state. I don't really want to put Linux on there. But when I use Linux, I use Arch. It takes forever to install. Even though it's actually quick when you know what you're doing, but it takes a lot of research to get it going. because It's completely from scratch from command line when you do it. It's one of the harder distros. Not as hard as Gen 2. But I'm going to be doing that. Um, so I'm going to be doing a full server build. We're going to take a, a server, Active Directory uh, server. We're going to build it up on server 2012 R2. We're going to build it up on a server that has, um, it's actually a server. It's a gigantic rack server. It's actually in one of my other videos. If you see the new server I took home, um, you guys should be able to find that video. I'll link it right here. And the other thing, the other thing I wanted you guys to know is, um, oh yeah, so back to what I was saying about the server builds. So we're going to take it, we're going to start off with Active Directory. We're going to install, of course, DNS. It's going to be an integrated DNS. We're going to talk about what that means. We're going to then get, we're going to install DHCP so we don't have to configure DNS on each client. Um, I, I read a whole bunch of people in India talking about server and they thought they had to do that. That's completely wrong. All you have to do is set up DHCP. that will push down the DNS. You don't have to configure all the computers. That's ridiculous. And then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to be talking about um, different things that you can do with the server after. So we're going to talk about file uh, server, uh, the file server, file system resource manager, whatever it's called, uh, FSRM, which is basically a way that you can go in and do crazy things. You can make it so that if somebody moves a file from one place to another, emails you. Um, we can do things like um, Active Space Enumeration. We'll get into all that. We'll talk about Hyper-V, how to build that up. Uh, we'll talk about the server that's running on, the hardware. 
Uh, we'll talk about activating Windows. We'll show you guys all how to do basically everything that you would need to do to properly do a server build. We're going to first start off with properly documenting, making documentation, making a network map, planning that out. And what that's going to end up doing is really showing the proper way that I've found to do a server. You know, I've been, I've been learning server for, you know, four years probably about now. It's hard to say. 2011, 2014 now. I think is when I finished my course and that's when I really started to actually understand was when I finished the core server and I still didn't really get it like nowadays I do the server when I do a server build it is so much better than the last four years that I've been doing it because really like it is so complicated to build up a Windows server properly and I'm not just talking about doing it right so it works that's fine you learn that on your first year I'm talking about making it so it's proper you know, all the, the name of the VHD files match the name of the server, match the name of the the, the, name, the actual tag name on the, on the Hyper-V terminal and the Hyper-V manager console. All that kind of stuff. Making your NIC teams match. Planning ahead for making sure that your NIC, your, your NICs, um, you, you know, your Hyper-V NICs actually match the other NIC that you can do Hyper-V replica ahead of time so you don't have to take the company down later. All that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you guys how to do it properly. So I want to see what you guys think of that uh, video too. So those are going to come out in a series. I'm going to start off with one by one. But let me know what you guys think of this video. Um, subscribe if you think you want to see more of my videos, if you want to see that server build coming up. Yeah, if you didn't like my video, dislike it. If you liked it, please do like it. Uh, your your, your guys' love really does help. And so thank you very much and have a good one.